Hello SL2. Today's notes are about the area between two functions. Before we start looking at those problems, I want to discuss some notation with you. And in particular, when it becomes a, a definite integral notation. And as you're familiar with uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus, when you have a continuous function, f of x, with the antiderivative f of x, you are going to write it in this format as you find it, the antiderivative. So let's back up to this line for a minute and just understand what this notation is saying. It's, if you're going to read this out loud verbally, you're going to read it as the integral. So this little bar here is called the integral. That's a symbol telling you that um, you're defining the integral of f of x from x equals a to x equals b with respect to x. So it's important to know which variable they want you to um, find the antiderivative. And in particular, um, your antiderivative, you will always find that interval, um, the integral of the item above, the largest one, so antiderivative of b, minus the antiderivative of A. And in particular, you will, once you've taken the um, antiderivative, you will draw this bar, the, inter the integral sign goes away, and you draw this bar on the other side, the right side of the page, and you will have from B to A, and then you will do the plug-in. So we will be doing that today, and I just want to spend a couple minutes making sure you understand it's important, this notation. So let's look at um, how you find the area between two curve functions. When you have um, two functions, and in this uh, example, in our definition, you have the function f of x and g of x. And here it's important to understand and the definition that f of x is greater than or equal to g of x for all x in the interval. So here our uh, blue line is our f of x. Okay, so I just paused the video to show that the blue here is the f of x and the g of x is this red line. And this is just an example to show that um, so in this section here, our f of x, our x values of f of x are going to be um, greater than our g of x. So it will be important to find these intersections as we do these problems. And our intersections are when the two functions are equal, so when they both are x equals a and x equals b, um, the shaded area between the two functions will be the integral from when x is equal to a to x equals b of f of x minus the g of x dx with respect to x here. Okay, so that's the definition and it it's regardless of the position in relation to the x-axis. You will always take the the larger one and subtract the um, smaller when you're looking at your graph. Okay, let's take a look at an example. And let's do, um, I think I like example two better. Um, so if you're looking at example two, and it, our function has, our question reads, find the area of the regions contained by the x-axis and our function of e equals to x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x. So the first thing to realize is um, the two regions they're talking about is first the x-axis, and that equation would be y equals 0, and the second would be this cubic of x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x. So our first step is always going to be find that intersections. So um, going back to our original part of our, our answer here, um, our definition, it wants us to find our 
A and B value. And it is defined as where they're intersecting because we are finding the area between two functions. So we need to know where they intersect so that we can determine um, the part that we're finding, A and B. So that'll be always be your first step. So stress that, highlight that. So finding the intersections is my first step. Okay. To find the intersections, remember um, you're going to set the two functions equal to each other. So we have y equals x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x and y equals 0. So we will set these two equal to each other. And um, generally we're going to be not able to use our calculator in these problems. So we'll be uh, referring back to all our knowledge from Algebra 2 and um, IBSL1. Here we have um, a greatest common factor. So that's where I'm going to start factoring out that greatest common factor of x and we'd have x squared plus 2x minus 3 equals 0 and then I have a trinomial I can factor and we would have x times x and the two numbers that multiply to negative 3 and add up to 2 would be positive 3 and negative 1. So at using the zero product property, we can find all the intersections. And this is quite interesting. There is um, more than just two. So let's see what is going to happen here. So we have x equals zero is one of our intersections, and x plus three equals zero, which result in the x value of negative three. And then um, our last factor to set equal to zero is x minus one, and we would have x equals um, 1 as the value. So our three intersections for our graph um, are, turns out they are the zeros of this function because we are intersecting with the x-axis. So I, um, the black dots are representing those three intersections. So we're going to have two different parts. And let's um, go ahead and take a minute and pause the video and um, draw your graph on here by just plugging in um, negative 3 uh, or actually we know negative 3 value for both functions but maybe plugging negative 2 in, negative 1 and, um, and seeing what happens here and go ahead and graph this function. Okay so hopefully your graph looks very similar uh, to mine and probably your knowledge of end behavior might have came back as you were plugging in values. So um, you probably found that negative 2 was 6 and negative 1 was 4. And then as you're plotting those points, hopefully your knowledge of end behavior where this is a third degree and has a positive leading coefficient. So it would have the end behavior where as x approaches negative infinity, it function is going to negative infinity. And as the function is going to positive infinity, the uh, function is going to positive infinity. So that should help you n determine, uh, we already know what, we're going to have two sections here, um, but which function are we going to be subtracting from the other. In this section, we'll be subtracting our cubic function from our uh, y equals 0, and in this section, we'll be subtracting our y equals 0 from our cubic. So there'll be two sections here for our, ant for our antiderivative to find the area. So let's go ahead and write those down. So we'll have two parts. And in our first part, we're um, just going to do from left to right. So here in this section, my a would be 3, and negative 3, and my b would be 0. So remember the uh, least value always goes on the bottom and then the greater value on top. And here our f of x, because um, remember we will write our f of x minus our g of x to find our antiderivative. Uh, and here when we go to plug in our f of x, we will plug in the cubic and subtract 
our y equals 0 function. Our second um, intersections in a and b value will be 0 and 1. So we will find the integral from 0 to 1 and our and again it's our f of x minus g of x but in this section our f of x will be the x-axis and our g of x will be our um, x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x. So let's go ahead and type that in. Okay, so when you have it typed in, um, it'll result in this. And then we're going to simplify. So um, for this section, it's just subtracting 0. So we will just have x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x respect to x. And our for this section, though, we're subtracting our um, cubic function. So every sign will change there. And um, what we can do, or we could have pulled out this whole sign and put that in front. Either way, whatever's uh, more simple to you. Uh, if there is a constant, you can pull that out as one of our rules. Um, let's go ahead and um, take the antiderivative. So um, of our first item here, our x cubed or antiderivative, remember we'll add on the exponent because we're doing reverse of um, for derivative. So 3 plus 1. And then remember we will divide by that uh, new exponent. Then um, for this term, we will have 2x and adding 1, so 2 plus 1 would be 3, and then dividing by that new exponent of 3. Now we have negative 3x and then squared because 1 plus 1 would be squared, and then dividing by that new exponent. And notice how my integral went away, and here comes my bar and you will write in your a and uh, b values. The same thing is going to occur here and we'll have negative x uh, to the fourth over 4 and negative 2x cubed over uh, 3 and positive 3x squared over 2. And again the integral went away and here comes our bar in our a and b values. So now you plug in our values for each and um, find our answer. So we plug in 0 to each of these values and that will result in 0. And then remember you'll subtract your second plug-in. So always the b is plugged in, F, um, the antiderivative of b minus the antiderivative of a. So we have a minus here and we'll be plugging in all of our um, values for negative 3. So um, go ahead and do that. Okay, so when you do that, you will find that your area of our first section, this area here between our two curves is 11 and a fourth and um, our area of this smaller section would be 7 twelfths. So adding those two sections together so you can find the area between the curves, you would have 11 and 5 six units. Okay, let's try uh, one more problem and I want you to go ahead and try to set this up on your own. And um, our function is our equation is asking about the region enclosed by y equals x plus 2 and y equals x squared plus x minus 2. Okay, so when you set up your problem, you should have found that your intersections were 2 and negative 2, and you should have saw in your graph that the line would subtract your parabola, so your integral would be set up like this. Then you would simplify and take the antiderivative and find that the answer is 10 and 2 thirds. We'll be practicing more of these in class 
and have a uh, great night.